Hey guys, my name is Demas Rizzoli and in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can stabilize your handheld footage. So if you're like me and you have shaky hands when filming videos, this effect can really help with stabilizing your footage. Now you could potentially use a gimbal to keep your video steady, but one, they're a little bit cumbersome to take everywhere you go as they do get quite big and heavy, and two, they can get quite expensive and not everyone has one. So the only other way to stabilize your footage would be in post. Stabilizing your videos helps minimize that natural handheld shakiness that can distract from the content in your shot and a video with smooth motion adds to that professional look you want on social media. So let's now jump into Adobe Premiere Pro and I'll show you how to use the warp stabilizer effect. Alright so I've got Premiere Pro open and I'm just going to drag in this video clip of me walking on the street in Hong Kong onto the timeline. As you can see because my friend recorded it handheld following behind me, the footage is obviously going to be quite rocky and unstable. The first thing we're going to do is to cut the footage so that we only use the part we want. So I'm just going to cut it here by using the shortcut controller command K, deleting the front bit and then clicking the space and deleting that too so that the clip jumps to the start of the timeline. Then I'm also going to cut the back part of the clip as well by just dragging the end back to the point I want. Alright so now let's try and stabilize the clip. To do this go to the effects tab here and search for warp stabilizer. It should be in the video effects and then distort folder. Then just click and drag the effect onto the clip. Automatically you'll see this effect appear in the effect controls panel and this blue bar also appears on the clip as well. This process takes a bit of time to do, especially if you have a long clip, so I recommend using shorter clips when you're trying to warp stabilize. So let's just speed this process up a little bit. Okay so that's done, let's see how it turned out. Looks so much better. Here's a side by side comparison of the before and after. Alright, so now let's just take a look at all the options here in the Warp Stabilizer effect. In the result drop down, you can pick either Smooth Motion or No Motion. For this clip, we're going to use Smooth Motion. No Motion would usually be used for clips that are quite still with barely any movement intended. Then you can also adjust the amount of smoothness. The larger the percentage, the more the video will be cropped as the AI tries to smooth out the video more and more. Just play around with this number until you're happy with the stabilization of your clip. Next there's method and for this there's position, position scale rotation, perspective and subspace warp. This just shows the different ways Premiere Pro tries to stabilize the footage. I usually find that either perspective or subspace warp works best. And finally there's the framing, which toggles between the different ways the stabilization affects the frame of the video. Stabilize only is quite interesting as it shows what the program is doing to counter the movement in your footage. Stabilize and crop shows the footage being cropped without scaling it bigger. Stabilize crop and auto scale is the default and the one I always use. And synthesize edges tries to fill in the edges automatically but it basically just extends lines towards the edges of the frames. It takes a while to preview for this one as well. Alright now you understand how the warp stabilizer effect works, let's try it on a few different clips and conditions. So let's drag in this other clip, also shot handheld but the intention was to have a still frame with me walking into it. So for this we're going to try the no motion method. So again drag the warp stabilizer effect onto the clip and wait for it to analyze. First let's just have a look at what smooth motion does to the clip. It does an okay job at stabilizing the footage but we want it to be still so let's change it to no motion. And there we go, the AI seemed to have done it quite nicely. Check out the before and after. Alright, so next let's try with a slow motion clip to see if it still can stabilize that. So the first clip we use here was actually shot at 50 FPS, so I'm just going to duplicate it to the end of the timeline. Just click and drag while holding Alt or Option on the keyboard. Then we're going to change the timeline frame rate to 23.976 FPS so that we can slow down this 50 FPS footage. To do this just go up to sequence and then sequence settings and change the time base. So now that's done we can slow down the clip. So right click on the clip, click speed and duration and change the speed to 50%. As you can see now the footage is in slow motion. Let's now try dragging the warp stabilizer effect in. Oh it doesn't work. Warp stabilizer and speed can't be used on the same clip. There is a workaround for this though, all we have to do is nest the clip. So right click on it and then click nest and then click ok. This basically flattens the clip and now you can put the effect on. Let's see how it turned out. I think it turned out pretty good. Let's look at the before and after. Yeah. 
Okay, so now I just want to try one last thing to show you guys the limitations of this effect. So let's drag in this super janky and unstable clip I shot at a market in Hong Kong. Let's just shorten it a bit so that the processing time is a bit less. And let's now try to put on the warp stabilizer effect. As you can see, because the footage was so unstable and rocky, the AI was not able to save it, giving super weird effects. So that just means that when you're out shooting handheld footage and know that you're going to want to stabilize it in post, you should be aware of how much shake you're able to salvage. Try to keep your footage as stable as possible so that it's easier for Adobe Premiere Pro to stabilize the video. And that's it. Pretty simple, right? Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully after watching this video you won't have any more shaky footage. Make sure to check out the rest of the videos in this Premiere Pro for social media series and come say hello on my social channels too. See you in the next video. Bye!